Hello everybody and welcome back to our little dot two tips and tricks series of video clips. This is Michael Quincy Stratman from Tech Support here in Paderborn. We are still in our three little 3D video clip series about dot two 3D. It has been a long time since our last video clip, but we've been so busy in going to exhibitions like LDI, doing roadshows and so on. So please excuse. But now we will continue. First of all, I would like to clean up a little bit my show file. We don't need this box anymore. So 3D objects and the box. Right mouse click, delete box one. I also don't need this little profile dimmer anymore. This one I have to remove or I have to delete in the console. Select this one, delete, select it. OK. So, a little clean up. We've, we have our moving lights here. They are hanging in the air. First of all, I would like to add a truss circle to it. So, in Media Database, I go to Trusses. In Circle, I choose a 6 meter one. And by drag and drop, I put it into my show file and roughly position it here. Why do I add a truss? Let's have a look how it looks like. Yeah, that's good enough for our little example. That looks okay. Yeah, this is good enough to show you what I would like to show you. And what I do now, I select the trusses and all my lights. So they are selected, and with the right mouse click, I could say Group Selected Objects. So dot two three D creates Group Group One, and in there are my moving lights now and my truss. Why do I do this? Now I only have one object that I want to influence. What I would like to show you is how to move this. We can move things in dot 3 d How do we do that? We have to patch a moving path. So, in my console, I go to the patch, I add a new fixture from ME Lighting Manufacturer. You see there are some moving paths and I choose Moving Path Translate. What do I do here? I patch a virtual fixture that allows me to move things. Moving path, quantity 1. ID is 11, that's OK, and I don't care about the patch. So there it is. Done. Apply all changes. And I have a fixture called moving path translate. Now I have to do the combination between this moving, between this fixture and the group. It's a little bit tricky. You have to grab the group and put it below our transition. This makes a combination. If I select this, you see that position is highlighted and I can now influence with this virtual fixture. I can position or move my group. You can move everything which is in here if you like. But let's start with this group. So I can make nice cues. If I say clear, clear, clear. Okay, my moving lights also have the dimmer off, but have these a little bit. Focus them. And I can use the target, the follow function. This could be the first queue, and in fixtures I select my moving path fixture, and now I can position it. You rarely find horizontal movable trusses, but in Z, and this could be the next queue, or like this. So you can move things in here by adding a moving path virtual fixture and combine that in here. 
This was the first thing I would like to show you. The other thing, we've got a lot of questions. Can we move cameras? Yes, you can move cameras. Cameras are your view onto your stage, onto your scenery in 3D. You have already a few cameras in here. This is our front view. And by using the spacebar of your keyboard, of your 3D computer, you can switch to the next camera, to the next. This is front left, left view on stage, back left, and so on. We've used this a few times. This is helpful to see where we are in our 3D room. And what I do now, I want to move a camera. I don't want to influence the original camera set I in. I select my front camera and do a right mouse click and say simply, simple, duplicate this one. So I get the second front camera, front number two. This is my view from front camera number two. How can I move this? I don't use a translation moving path. I patch another one. I go to setup, add a new fixture, select the other one. I'm still at ME lighting and I use a camera controller. This is also a virtual fixture that allows me to control my camera. Okay, this is a fixture type quantity one. Next open ID is 12. I don't care about the patch. Done. Where is it? It's down here. Camera controller. Okay, done. Apply all changes. Foop. There's my camera controller. And also this camera controller you can find in your 3D objects. There's a translation from translate moving path that we had before. And here is our camera controller. I now change to cameras. Select my front camera 2, the one I've just duplicated. And I have a look at its properties. And in properties you see you can combine this with a fixture. And if you give a click on this through three dots you see you can connect this to your camera controller 1. So from now on, camera number 2, which is named front 2, controlled by fixture ID 12, which is a camera controller. And also position and focus are highlighted, so I can influence this. Let's have a look. This pan, whoa, and tilt, maybe switch this to fine. You can control your camera and you can do camera moves by making a little cue list. You see, this is very sensible. If you're in doubt to get it back off, means the X and you come back. And the Z, which is the height. Be careful with this one. But this is a way how you can move or do camera moves. Off mean the Z. And we have reset it, this one. This was the second thing I would like to show you. So, we have patched two virtual fixtures. A moving path, which we have connected to our little group. Where was it? Not the cameras. So translation and in there is group number one. So if we choose this one, we can influence our objects by moving them X, Y and Z is the height. And we've done the same for camera by patching a virtual fixture called camera controller. And there we have a pan and tilt. And we have a XYZ for our camera. So this have been two questions from the last exhibitions. Please show us how to do this. And the other question was, as we go on, 
other question was um, how to do textures textures on surfaces I make my dot two three D a little bit bigger so we can see better what's going on and to do textures I want to add a primitive so I go to my media database a primitive plane let's keep it plain bring it in move it a little bit so that we can see it there is a plane and what are the properties the properties it's one by one meter and it's very thin and this is the position this is good enough for now I have a plane and I want to put something on it so I can turn it a little bit so that we can see it better which way around do we have to turn it? We will find that out. Just roughly do it like this. But I need a materials window. So here I have my assets to see what's going on and the properties of each. So there's my plane that I've added. These are the properties of it. But we need a window more, which is called materials. A materials window. So what is the material of my selected object this is a plane and there you see texture if you watch the properties of it you can see in texture the same three dots that we've seen in the other window and there i can say what texture i want to use on my object so i go there the current media path for textures is either media or gobos but you can go there or press again the three dots here and you can choose from any folder on your PC. By default it goes to dot two or MI Technologies dot two the version and in Gobo. So I've copied a few PNGs or JPEGs in this folder and I select one updating file information please be aware whatever texture or jpeg or png you load in there they, they can be huge so this blows up your show file take care about this this is a relative small one and this is mapped onto our play well that was easy this is a bit small we can make it bigger that's not the point of it but when you make it bigger, it might change the direction, so you might have to correct this. So I have a plane on stage, and I roughly point it there. You see the degrees that you have to adjust. So we want, of course, 90 degrees to make it proper. And let's have a look where it is placed on stage. Whoa. Yeah, it's just in the middle. Just bring it roughly to where you want it, end of it. There we might see this is not the end of the stage. The 2D views are much better for this sometimes. You see, we can lift it to here. And we have to put it a little bit to there. This is much more precise otherwise given the coordinates here but this is how to put textures on things add a plane or primitive and then open select it open the materials window and there you see the texture for this one is now dot two and this works with pngs jpegs and of course this works with media files as well and there I can select a video clip. WebM can be opened. This file will not be copied into the show file. You have to transport this separately if you export your show or you go somewhere to the next PC with your show. But now a video clip will be displayed in here. So in media, but you can search your whole computer for clips and wait a little bit 
until it's finished and now it will be played back. You can influence the playback of video clips as textures on your object. Therefore, you have a little video player in here. And there you can pause it. And play it back and stop it. Normally. Of course, you have to select it. Then it works. So guys, we've done a lot in this one. Like I said, please excuse the little breaks that we've had, but we've been really busy and how to control cameras, how to control or how to move things in here that have been the most asked questions to dot to 3D. And I hope we've answered it with this one. This was a long clip. Stay tuned, we do one more. And uh, this will come very much after this one. So stay tuned, guys. I hope this was helpful. This was Michael Quincy Stratman from and from all our tech support team here. Happy autumn. Enjoy your life. And keep on programming. Thanks, guys. Bye.